time to pull up a chair. We've got another great story for you today in the R Lounge. The key to avoiding becoming the main topic at water cooler gossip is always look busy. Today in the R Lounge, nothing says not dating like pretending to be deeply engrossed in an Excel spreadsheet while dodging a coworker's prying questions. Up first, good old fashioned office politics. Am I the a hole for calling my coworker work sister after she called me work husband in front of everyone? I, 34 male, work in a small office and we have about 30 people working here. Mary, 35 female, is one of my coworkers. We've been working together for six years now. We have six people in our department and we have to frequently travel across the state as our work involves overseeing government projects. We always travel in a group of two. Although my travel partner changes based on the project, Mary and I are generally put on similar projects and enjoy each other's company. My wife also likes Mary. Overall, we have a very healthy work relationship. On to the incident. Yesterday, we had a happy hour in our office, and we were all drinking after work hours and chatting. It was a group of around 10 people that stayed back. Mary was blabbering about how we both have been traveling together so much in the last year. She was roasting me for my habits while traveling, like always forgetting stuff in my hotel room, being sweaty and stinky when I join her for breakfast in the mornings, because I go to the hotel gym. Everyone was laughing and she was making it sound how unbearable I was to tag along, all in good fun. I also told some funny and sweet stories about her and agreed with her saying that I can be difficult to be with sometimes. Mary came to me and hugged me tightly and told me that she loves me and I'm her work husband. It was all innocent on the surface, but she might have been a bit drunk and just didn't let go of her tight hug. Also, I hate that phrase, as I do have a wife that I promise to be with forever and not just in non-working hours. After a few seconds, I started becoming uncomfortable and also saw a few people staring at us. So to defuse the situation, I took her hands off my shoulder and told her she was my work sister, and that is why I love to annoy her so much. That seemed to have upset Mary, and she left and went back to her desk and was sobbing silently. I tried to apologize to her, but she told me how embarrassing the whole situation was. She said that she just meant work husband in platonic way, but calling me her work sister made her sound like a creep in front of the whole office. She was also angry that I aggressively removed her hands from my shoulders while hugging. I tried to reason with her that I do not like the work husband phrase and also people gave dirty looks when she said it. So I was just trying to make sure people did not take her words in the wrong way. We talked for a few minutes afterwards and Mary calmed down. She hugged me again and left. I really felt guilty afterwards because I can see Mary's point. I made her sound like a creep by implying that she meant something inappropriate when she called me her work husband. However, I was a bit uncomfortable in that situation and just did not want people to call us that or assume something wrong. Am I the a-hole for calling Mary my work sister? I am sitting in my office writing this and a bit worried if I embarrassed Mary in front of everyone. Let's see what the community thinks. First response. I think you meant to ask in your last sentence if you're the a-hole for calling her your work sister, not your work wife. Regardless, no, you're not the a-hole. All too often, work spouses end up being inappropriately involved and you are trying to head off any rumors. Good on you. I think work sister is a much better term. Someone else chimed in. Not the a-hole, though you are for being far too generous. The reason why she jumped straight to thinking you were calling her a creep because she knows what she was doing was inappropriate. Work husband is considered widely inappropriate now. She knows this. You responded correctly. You owe your actual wife loyalty. Mary needs to back off and act more of a professional. One more opinion chimed in. Not the a-hole. I think you were justified that whole time. Unfortunately, alcohol can make things awkward for everyone, but you were made uncomfortable by the extended hug, so you removing her arms from you was understandable. The problem is right now is that Mary is only considering her own feelings and not thinking of how her actions made you feel. She did think that such a public display of affection might make a married man uncomfortable. She's only thinking that you made her look like a creep. And let's be honest, she did kind of look like someone hitting on a married man after drinking too much. You're not the a-hole here, OP. It seems like you are trying to keep things professional and avoid misunderstandings. Mary's comment about you being her work husband was a bit much, especially since you're married. Your discomfort was valid, and it sounds like you handled it as best you could in the moment. Update. I posted this one about calling my coworker Mary my work sister after she tried to call me her work husband in front of the entire office. A lot of you are asking for an update, but that sub does not allow me to post updates, so I'm writing it here. 
thanks everyone for your comments and giving me confidence that I did not do anything wrong or inappropriate. As I was sitting in the office the next day, I knew things would be a bit awkward between Mary and me. Mary ignored me the whole morning. Initially, I was planning to go and apologize to her, but after the post, I decided that I do not need to do that, as I should be the one who was offended. Everyone in the office could see that we were acting weird, and I heard some people gossiping about us. One of the ladies also came to me and asked if I want to talk about Mary and me. Around 3 p.m. in the afternoon, I was sitting in my office working. Mary came into my office and closed the door behind her. She was angry at me and started saying that I needed to stop being an a-hole and stop ignoring her. I told her to sit and to talk about what is going on. She told me that she feels humiliated and everyone has been staring at her the whole morning because of what I did. I also stood my ground and told her that I was okay with her making fun of me, but calling me her work husband and hugging me in front of everyone for a long time made the situation awkward. She told me to get over myself and that I should know exactly what she meant. Mary said that I made a big deal of what was supposed to be a joke and made it awkward for everyone. She said calling someone work husband is a normal thing and just means that she knows me intimately like a spouse would. She said that because we spend so much time traveling together, she knows all the intimate details of how I behave outside of work. I stopped her and told her that I felt offended by the term work husband because I have a wife and do not want people to use that term to describe our relationship. I told her that she would not understand as she is single, but as a married man, I really do not want anyone to describe me as a husband in any capacity. She said that I am misinterpreting what she was saying. She felt that we have known each other more time than I have been married. She knows me more intimately than even my wife. I have no idea why she feels that way, and I also behave like her husband when we travel together. She went on about how we go out to dinners together after work, how I always insist on having breakfast together in the morning to plan our actions for the day, and I walk around in my underwear, referring to my gym shorts, around her in the mornings. She also talked about how we spend hours talking to each other during road trips, and how I'm the only man she can trust with any secret in her life. She said that I am the definition of work husband, and I am just in denial. I was a bit angry at this point. I told her that I do all that because I consider her my friend, and she is delusional if she thinks she knows me more intimately than my wife. I told her I do not want to hear that term again, and it is extremely disrespectful to my marriage. Only one woman gets to call me her husband, and that is my wife. Moreover, if my actions are giving her such ideas, maybe we need to stop being friends. She became apologetic afterward and told me that she did not mean to disrespect my wife, and it was not her intention. She apologized to me and told me to just let it go. She said that she loves traveling with me and she does not want anything to change between us. She again said that I am misinterpreting her statement and just wants to move on. She came to hug me again, but I just told her it was okay and stepped back. I also talked to my wife about the incident that night. As expected, my wife was angry at Mary and told me that she hates the term work husband. She asked me if Mary has ever flirted with me during our trips or had a crush on me. I truthfully told her that I really have not felt that way and she may have just said that because she was a bit drunk and is now being stubborn about it. My wife said that she feels a bit uncomfortable about Mary now and says that it's strike one for Mary and I need to try and put more distance between us while traveling. If she ever repeats the same behavior again, I should report her to HR. I promised my wife that I would try to reduce my interactions with Mary outside work hours and be more guarded around her. Update. Thanks everyone for the comments and explaining the urgency of the situation. I discussed it with my wife and have set up meetings with my manager and HR today. I plan to not file a complaint, but document what happened last week and why it made me uncomfortable. I do not have any upcoming travels this week due to holidays, but have to travel next Tuesday with her to her work site. I will discuss with my manager on what my options are. However, I feel a little distance between Mary and me for some time would be the right solution for now. One quick community comment. Mary's description of your relationship sounds really clingy and dependent. She has created a narrative in her head about your connection. The the only man she can trust with any secret in her life, that's not a work husband, whatever that means. You better keep your interactions registered and public. This can bite you in the butt very fast. Your instincts to set clear boundaries and talk it out with your wife were spot on. It's important to protect your marriage and not let Mary's clinginess interfere with that. Keeping your interactions more public and documented is definitely a smart move, especially since you're going to be traveling together again. Hopefully, Mary can reflect on her behavior and recognize that her actions were inappropriate. But until then, it's wise to maintain that distance you mentioned. It's great that you're prioritizing your relationship with your wife and being open about the situation with her. Good luck with your meetings with your manager and HR. Have you experienced something similar? Share your stories with us in the comments below. Up next, a not so happy start to what was supposed to be a beautiful engagement. Am I the a-hole if I break up with my fiance after she showed a startling change of behavior after getting engaged? 
I, 32 male, just recently proposed to my girlfriend of two years, Sharon, 30 female, like a month and a half ago. And it feels like the second the ring got on her finger, her attitude and behavior took a total 180. The entire time we were dating, we seemed exceptionally compatible, and at least it seemed we shared common beliefs and morals. Seven weeks ago, I proposed, and she said yes, and I felt like it was the happiest moment of, for the two of us. But not even a week later, it's like her attitude totally flipped. I thought I knew all her friends, but one day I came home and there were six women I've never seen before, and Sharon introduced me to them. I was curious as to why I was just now meeting them, when I already met Sharon's two best friends, Michelle and Octavia, both not present, over a year and a half ago. Sharon said she wanted to make sure we were a sure thing before I met her inner circle. I found this strange, not to mention it was a weeknight and they were quickly draining my wine rack of wine. Sharon still had her own place, but she stayed with me so often she practically lives here. Still, I found it incredibly rude when they left, with four empty bottles of rosé in their wake. I tried to talk to Sharon about having uninvited guests on weeknights and she dismissed my grievance very flippantly, more that she brushed me off. The following weeks, she went out with the girls several times. And when she brought the girls to my place, twice without notice, once with notice to appease me, her words, they all treated me like a butler, shaking their empty wine glasses at me for refills. After the fourth time, I made it clear that I will get a locked wine rack. Sharon just called me no fun after that. It gets worse. Sharon decided me and the girls get off on the wrong foot and said we should have dinner together at a nice restaurant. Well, I went, and it was not great. The six kept prodding me about my life, my house, my career, but deflected every question I asked. It got especially bad at night when they started talking about modern relationships and jealousy, and one of them brought up some key points about relationships that I thought Sharon and I were on the same page about, specifically what ifs regarding polyamory and being friends with exes. To my shock, Sharon said we shouldn't be too hasty on such decisions, which was a total 180 to how she expressed herself on these things only a month prior where she was vehemently against keeping ex-intimate partners in friend circles and was staunchly monogamous. The worst part was when the bill arrived, Sharon announced it should be together and slid me the check. I told her she can't be serious and we got into a bit of an argument. I ended it by putting my amount down in cash and walked out, leaving them to figure out the rest of the bill. The next days after that, Sharon kept calling me toxic and fragile, but every time I even pushed at it, she would give an apology and promise she was just stressed at work. It's nuts. We haven't even planned the wedding yet. The worst part was this Monday when at work, I got a Nest doorbell alert, checked and saw Sharon and one of her six new friends arriving at my place, going in and exiting with my golf clubs. This set was a gift from my father and it cost a pretty penny too. So Sharon lending it out without my permission got me pissed. I immediately called Sharon and told her and her friends to return the clubs. Sharon tried to gaslight me with, but you promised to lend the clubs to her boyfriend, remember? A total of the club's cost would move it into a serious crime, and her and her friend had an hour to return them or the cops would be called. Sharon kept insisting she got my permission and I told her to cut the crap. Well, not 45 minutes later, I got another notification of Sharon and her friend coming back with the clubs and going inside, leaving them. Sharon's friend flipping off the nest doorbell on the way out. I got home and saw Sharon's friend literally just through the clubs and back on the living room floor. Sharon tried to talk to me about my toxicity again. I told her again to cut the crap. I said if I knew this was how she was, I would have never proposed. That seemed to freak her out, and she again insisted that she was stressed from work, but I wasn't buying it anymore. I told her to return the ring and her key, and we would talk about our relationship this weekend. She cried and begged me not to cancel the engagement, and insisted that it was just stress. I told her again we will talk about it this weekend. She finally relented. I had my house rekeyed anyways after she left, just to be safe. Sharon has been texting me constant messages of love and apologies for getting swept up and insisted she was only wanting to show off to her close friends. I don't know. I'm just not buying it. The same close friends have been sending me texts daily calling me toxic and fragile again, saying they knew I wasn't man enough for Sharon or secure enough to share her with friends. A few of my friends that knew Sharon the entire two years we were dating were surprised and can't believe she turned hide this quick and that there must be something missing, or that I'm leaving something out. They say I must have said something to trigger her friends to act like this, and I had to have been the a-hole somewhere along the process. I don't know. It's a lot to take from all directions right now. It's alarming how quickly things changed after your proposal. The sudden shift in Sharon's behavior and her new friend's attitude definitely raised some red flags. It's also concerning that she seems to be dismissing your feelings and gaslighting you about the golf clubs. Taking time to reevaluate your relationship before moving forward with the engagement is wise. 
You deserve a partner who respects you and values your perspective. Trust your instincts. If something feels off, it likely is. Update. Sharon's been gone for an hour now. Breakup is official. I have the ring back. I did talk to Michelle via Facebook, and Michelle said her and Octavia were cousins of Sharon, and Michelle also said she knew the six and didn't care for them. Michelle didn't say much more than that. I did meet Sharon's parents, and they both seemed to like me, and the topic of Michelle and Octavia never came up around them. None of our finances were intermingled, yet, but it was planned for later this month, which won't happen. I invited three of our mutual friends, Casey, John, and Mike, to be here when Sharon got here. Sharon showed up and was surprised to see we had company. I said they were here for both of our sakes. Sharon wanted to phone three of the six to come over to even things out, and I refused, and I used the club theft as a reason. Sharon sat on the couch very dramatically and then asked if I really wanted to make this public. I outright asked why she changed so much after the engagement and why she hid the existence of the six. Sharon then went in again about how she insulates her inner circle until a partner is vetted. I called BS. I met her parents. What's more inner circle than your parents? Sharon tried to deflect, but I wouldn't have it. I pointed out how for the last month her friends dropping by cost me nearly $500 in wine, which she, by the way, made no attempt to reimburse. I also pointed out her trying to make me pay an eight-person dinner bill without asking me first. She said she wanted to show how great a guy I was and how she clearly misjudged me and was disappointed by my attitude. I then asked about the clubs. She tried gaslighting with, You totally said it was okay, remember? And I kept saying, BS. Mike piped in. He knew the clubs were a gift from my dad and I was highly protective of them. He too called BS. And that's when Sharon turned her attention to Mike and John, saying, isn't he getting forgetful lately? Don't you remember when he forgot that one date? And neither was buying it. I finally said that forget postponing the wedding or canceling the engagement. The entire relationship is going to end if she isn't going to be straight with me. Sharon made a very long exaggerated sigh. She took off the ring and dropped it on the coffee table. She got up to leave and said, You're never going to find someone as good as me. And to send her stuff to her apartment. She left and Casey, John and Mike were totally stunned. All I could say was, Believe me now? We ordered pizza and we're waiting for it to arrive now. I'm still utterly shocked and confused by Sharon's attitude. I'm sure the heartbreak will come next, but right now, I'm just kind of numb. One quick community comment. You'll never find anyone like me. That's kind of the point. You're never going to find someone as good as me. It's definitely a statement that sounds more like a reflection of her own insecurity than the truth. It's kind of liberating to realize that finding someone who truly respects and values you is the goal, and it seems like she didn't fit that bill. Take the time you need to process everything. The numbness is totally understandable after such an intense experience. And hey, ordering pizza with friends is a solid way to distract yourself and remind you that there are good people who genuinely care about you. It may not feel like it now, but this is a step toward finding someone who aligns better with your values and treats you with the respect you deserve. Keep focusing on yourself and surround yourself with those who support you, OP. What do you think? And thank you for joining us today in the R Lounge. Be sure to like and subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next video. Until next time, and please put your chair back where you found it.